Australia, in its early isolation, was a kindlier continent than it is today. The dinosaurs had gone. No giant predators stalked the land. For marsupial mammals and ground-dwelling birds alike, this was the promised land. in the rainforest, the sheep-sized Napakaldia grazed and courted. Its descendants would include some of the largest marsupials that ever lived. In the canopy above, primitive possums and cuscus clambered. Ancestral potteroos and bandicoots scurried across the forest floor. And in the green cradle of Australia's forests, marsupials diversified and flourished. But hard times lay ahead. Ice ages gripped the polar regions. Less water fell as rain elsewhere. The old world was disappearing. A new kind of forest, drier and more open, began to replace the rainforest. And as their habitat changed, the marsupials adapted too. One of Napakaldia's descendants was this hulking browser, Palakestes. enabled it to reach high up the tree trunks and made it more than a match for the pouch predator of the woodlands, the thylacine. ice sheets expanded, Australia's forests dried and died. Here at the edge of the spreading deserts, herds of diprotodon grazed the salt bush. These rhino-sized animals were the heaviest marsupials they had ever been. Leo, the so-called marsupial lion, was actually no larger than a leopard, too small to tackle an adult diprotodon. But woe betide the youngster who failed to keep up with the herd. Like a Leo had evolved from plant eaters, it inherited no canine teeth. Instead, it grew stabbing incisors and unique blade-like premolars that could shear through flesh and bone. The largest carnivore of arid Australia was not a mammal, but a lizard. Megalania would have dwarfed its modern cousins, the Goannas of Australia and the dragons of Komodo. It grew to a monstrous seven meters in length. It was capable of sudden bursts of speed and could have overpowered the largest diprotodon. But why waste precious energy to catch your own meal? when by sheer intimidation you can steal someone else's. Less 
less than 100,000 years ago, Australia was still a land of giants. Huge flightless birds browsed like feathered giraffes on the higher branches. Reptilian herbivores as well. The horned tortoise cropped the tough scrub of the Australian bush. It was well protected, but its most effective defense was its ability to retaliate. Australia's isolation had long since ended. Fifteen million years ago, the crustal plate on which it lay crunched into the southern edge of Asia, and the islands of Indonesia became the stepping stones between two worlds. Birds and bats could cross the narrow seas with ease. Then, the first land rodent made the crossing. Tough and resilient, the newcomer made itself at home. But the next arrivals would change Australia to suit their needs. Sapiens arrived in Australia some 60,000 years ago. Humans brought with them skills which would transform the continent, the making of tools and weapons, which would make them Australia's most effective predators. Language and culture with which to interpret their new world and to pass on their understanding to their young. And above all, the mastery of fire. With fire, they remade the landscape. Year after year, they burnt the bush, until only the fire-adapted plants survived. The broad-leafed forests that had recycled precious moisture disappeared. droughts became frequent. Whether it was fire and climate change or the spears of the new invaders that caused the extinction of Australia's largest herbivores, we still don't know. We do know that by 20,000 years ago, they'd gone. The survivors were the small, the wary, and the swift. With so much of their prey gone, the large predators went too, until only the thylacine was left. Four and a half thousand years ago, it too disappeared from mainland Australia, driven out by the dingo. It survived in isolated Tasmania, until a new wave of invaders drove it to extinction. To the Aboriginal people watching from the shore, they first appeared as white-winged water birds, serene and graceful. But behind the billowing sails were upright masts and horizontal yards. The new invaders were a people of straight lines and right angles, stone walls and wire fences, money and exchange.
With hard hoofed animals and axes, the Europeans tried to reshape the new land to resemble the one they'd left. came. Most now seldom venture beyond the squared off pavements of their cities by the sea. For humans now, a decade is an era, a century, an age. But in the time scale that Australia lives by, the entire history of humankind has occupied no longer than a heartbeat. Australia's story has a further 50 million years to run until it merges finally with the great land mass to its north. By that time, surely, human beings and all their works will have gone the way of the dinosaur, and the diprotodon. And species yet unborn will disembark from the Australian Ark at the long journey's end. Coming up, Lost Worlds Week continues with some flying creatures you wouldn't want to find in your backyard bird feeder. It's a pterodactyl attack on Paleo World, next from TLC.